Hey, today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about task number 22 on a CI exam. Task 22, the way it's worded is the examiner can pick any one of three faults and demonstrate the three faults. And then you as a candidate are supposed to identify the fault, identify what you would do to fix the fault, and you're also responsible for being able to mimic the fault or imitate the fault. So those are the three things. Now, a couple of words. First off, you really want to make sure that you're doing Bruce Richards' system of six-step six, six system. It's super important. You've got to look at the line. If you see the line and it's, uh, you know, like for instance, two of, these, two of these tasks that they're going to show you or two of the faults are different toward forms of tailing loops. If you see that tailing loop, you know it's got to be one of the two. Now you start watching a rod and you see if the rod, if it's a tailing loop caused by an inappropriate application of power or if it's a tailing loop caused by uh, a creep. Once you've discovered that, and you may have to look at it a couple of times, you may have to ask the examiner, could I see that again? And then you're going to watch and see if you have to pick between the two. So the two tailing loops are pretty easy. You're going to have to use uh, a little bit of the, the process of elimination in this if you want to do well. So if you see a tailing loop, it's obviously a tailing loop. You've got to now decide what, it, what is causing it, what, how you're going to correct it, and then be able to perform it. You've already done tailing loops in task number three and task number 18. So it shouldn't be a big problem. As a matter of fact, personally, when I'm examining, if I see somebody who has done a super job on number three and number 18, it's unlikely I'm going to ask them about the tailing loops on number um, 22 because they've already demonstrated they're really good at it. The other ones, we've got too much wrist. So too much wrist, you're going to look at the loop. You're going to see a big loop, a big open loop. And then you're going to look at the body and you're going to see the wrist. There you can make, obviously, big loops without, without any wrist, but the point is, this is an easy one. If you see too much wrist, it's too much wrist. So now you're going to have to correct it, demonstrate it, and do all that sort of stuff. Another one is tracking. So if you look at it and you really can't see anything, let's say you're on the side, you can't see anything. It's not a tail. It's not too much wrist. And you can't really tell what it is. It looks pretty good. Get behind the examiner. Ask him to do it again. Stand behind it. If you see the rod doing this kind of thing or the hand doing this kind of thing, then you know it's going to be a tracking error. And then you're going to have to correct that. The other one is slack. If you see a lot of slack, a lot of times what examiners will do, they'll just put a lot of slack right in front of them and then try to do the pickup. If you, got a, if you see a bunch of slack, then then you know that's what it is. The last one is a poor stop. You've eliminated the two tails, you've eliminated the wrist, you've eliminated the slack, and you've eliminated the, the, the tracking error. That's got to be a poor stop. So what you're looking for is just tell yourself, hey, what can't this be? So it's the process of elimination is going to help you a lot. I think most examiners have practiced this quite a bit, and they differentiate the six pretty well. So your job then is to, to develop an understanding of which one of the six it is, and don't be afraid of asking them to do it again. Don't get in the trap of looking at the body first. Look at that line, then look at the body, and then look at the hand and the rod and all that, and then work your way back up again. So let's do the first one is too much wrist. So I'm gonna to do too much wrist, and then we're gonna have Barbara come out and I'll show you how I might correct it. But there's other ways of correcting it. Ask your mentor, talk to other people, uh, read and figure out there's lots of ways to maybe correct too much wrist, but I'm going to give you the most common ones. So here we go, too much wrist. So let's assume that my, my student is using too much wrist. Go ahead and Barbara, you just do a back cast with too much wrist. You don't have to do it hard, just go ahead. So my student ends up with too much wrist. What I'm going to do, there's a couple of things. Number one, hey Barbara, could you do me a favor? I want you to look back and look where this rod, what piece of landscape back there is your rod at right now. What I want you to do is I want you to stop it more like right here. And look at your wrist. Right now, the minute ago, we had a whole bunch of fingers in here. What I'd like you to do is, the other thing you can do is just watch your fingers and try to keep, when you come back at the backstroke, keep your, your, your rod pretty close to your hand or to your forearm. Okay, so you can do those two things. You can look back there and you can do this. That's one way of doing it. Another way, I can just stand here and I can put a, a noodle right here. Barbara, when you get back to here and you hit that noodle, then you've got to stop. So go ahead and move your rod back, just like you're, okay, now stop, now do a forward cast. You can do a slow motion. Okay, now come back and stop. Now this time I don't want you to hit the noodle. 
So go ahead, do it again and see if you can stop before you hit the noodle. There you go, good. So that's another way of doing it. So we can do both those ways. Other things that are a little more radical, you can stick the butt of the rod in the sleeve and that'll keep, go ahead, that'll keep the wrist from breaking excessively. The other thing you could do, you can get a strap. You know, Joan Wolf invented a little strap. You can also just get some two-sided Velcro and stick that on there. If they're breaking the wrist, it's more common to break the wrist in the back than in the front. But if they're breaking the wrist in the front, it's the same kind of thing. And correct the back first. Don't try to correct them both simultaneously. Correct the back first. Okay, Barbara, I want you to stop right here when your rod gets right to here. I want you to look at that tree and stop it. The other thing I want you to do is I want you to just make sure you're watching your wrist. And when you come forward from right here to here, you're not, you're not seeing a whole lot of rod movement in here, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, if Barbara still has a problem, I can do this. I can hold it up here. I want you to go ahead and do a cast. Forward, right there. Now, this time I don't want you to hit it. Come really close. Okay, do it again. Now, a lot of times you've done this, you can then, if it's still having trouble after they start doing it on their own, you can still use the, the Velcro, you can still use the rod of the butt in the, in the sleeve. What happens if you're where you've corrected the back and then all of a sudden they're doing it again in the front and now they're doing it in the back? You can hold two noodles up if you want. Go ahead. Don't hit them. Try not to hit them. There you go. Good. Much better. So that's too much wrist. So let's go to another one. Here we go. I'm going to do the next, the next fault. See if you can pick out this next fault. Now you may have to ask your examiner to see that again. Now you should have picked up creep. You're going to look at the rod, you're going to see that. Now how do you correct creep? If I see, if I see a student that has a lot of creep, number one I'll ask him. The easiest thing is just to ask him, could you just, what I want you to do is I want you to stop your rod and I don't want you to move it again until you say hi mom. So go ahead and bring your rod back slow, right there and you're going to stop it. And then I want you to say hi mom and the second you get done saying hi mom, at, at that point I want you to go forward. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are. You're going to come back, hi mom, and then forward. Hi mom, and then forward. Okay? So go ahead and do that. Hi mom. Good. Do it again. Hi mom. Good. Say hi mom a little sooner, right as you stop. Hi mom. I'm going to try one more time. Go ahead. Hi mom. Good. Okay, if that doesn't work, if they, you know, they, they said hi mom, but even while they're saying hi mom, they're, they're creeping. If that doesn't work, we've got to go to the next level. So what I want you to do, Barbara, this time I want you to come back. I want you to actually watch your rod. And when you get to your stop position, I want you to watch that it doesn't move. And then remember what we did with the paintbrush. When you get to here, just make, just make your paintbrush throw. Just nice, right off the bat, the second you decide to go, just go. Go ahead. There you go, good. Again? Yeah, do it again. Okay, go ahead. Good, excellent. All right, super. Now, what if that doesn't work? There's a couple of things I do. Barbara, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually grab your rod. So don't panic, but when you come back, I'm just going to hold it with two fingers, and then you're going to come, when I let go, you're going to come forward. Okay. Ready? Go ahead. Do it again. Do it again. Oops. Do it again. The other thing you can do is I take a noodle. Go ahead, you're going to do the same thing. And I, this time, Barbara, I want you to go back until you hit the noodle. And then don't come forward until I push it. Oh, okay. Okay, you ready? There, beautiful. So that's two, that's a bunch of stuff you can do for creep.